It's delicious. You tried it. You tried my tea without my consent. It's unacceptable. <laughs> anyway, let's look at what we did yesterday before I turn into a tea stream. So, uh, essentially what we did was, let me get my point pointer here, which is actually my paintbrush. We did this section here, this lit area. Right now it looks so wildly different from what's going on in here. And that's because it has a lot more detail. Uh, indeed you did. That is unacceptable, period. That uh, I'm gonna have to ban you now. I'm gonna have to ban you from my stream. There's no other possible outcome to this situation. Anyway, uh, we did some details here. We did some of these wrinkles, which I think look pretty great. Um, we did some of the details here, which I think also look pretty good. Um, I did say that I was going to glaze a color over this and make it darker. I said that less than 24 hours ago. And by the, the end of the stream, I decided that no, that is a terrible idea. Why is that a ter terrible idea? Um, I think it's a terrible idea because we aren't going to be painting like light parts back into this. Like we did here, we painted some like whites into the tips. Um, we can't really do that here. Um, the reason being that if we put white into our shadow, it's going to become, uh, it's going to look opaque, which is going to make our shadow look wonky, but it's also going to make it lighter, which is the problem that we have in the first place. So rather than make this darker and then paint white into it, which is going to make it look weird, uh, we are only going to paint the dark scene and the lights are already here. This color is going to be the lightest of each of these colors. Now, that makes things a little bit difficult in that we're going to have to, uh, we don't have the luxury of working with both lights and darks on a local color. So that is the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that, um, I don't know, maybe that's the only thing. I thought I had two things, but I don't think, maybe, maybe I did. Maybe I did. I don't know. Maybe we're just talking out of my ass. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go back to our palette. I need to take the cap off of my brush. Uh, in fact, I'm not even going to be using my brush quite yet. We are going to take our palette knife here and we're going to make our color here. So like yesterday, we're gonna start with this. We're going to make it a little more orangey, I guess you could say, by adding a little bit of our warm yellow. There it is. We're going to knock it back. Uh, remember if we have a, um, a orangish red, we're going to need a bluish purple, which is on the opposite of our color wheel. And so uh, that will give us exactly what we are looking for. So we're gonna go with this blue, which is already kind of verging on purple. We may, we may just work with this, we'll see. I have to keep adding a little bit more to it. Okay, I think that's actually not quite what we want because we also want it to be a little pinkish. That's what we've kind of made throughout this. So I also know that our tattoo or tattoo, the shadow color is a purple. Hmm. 
but a little bit more blue than that with burnt umber. So I think that's a pretty decent purple, maybe a little more blue. And then burnt umber. Now this is gonna to be tough to get right. I'm gonna add a little extra burnt umber, umber just to make sure. I'm gonna clean off my palette knife because I have combined a whole bunch of stuff. And this is our shadow color. We're just gonna go with it. So we're gonna take some of this. We're gonna mix it with this. And there we have it. The color that we will be using for this. And I think we need a little bit more burnt umber here. And we're gonna see how this goes. I have no idea if this is going to be good, bad, indifferent. I have literally no idea, but we're gonna try it out. We're gonna put down some happy little flowers. You'll see me thinning my paints with this here. Oh, you know what? I'm not even, there we go. So uh, this is painting medium. This is, this would be the analog to water and acrylic to thin your paint. Um, so that's the first difference. Now, I also have this jar, which is filled with mineral spirits or terpenoid or whatever you want to call it. And that is for cleaning brushes. So unlike acrylic, you actually have two separate things for thinning and cleaning. Um, and that's really because you don't want this stuff on your panel. Uh, you don't really clean this very frequently. So um, it gets gross. Now you can use this as a medium or you can make crazy combinations of mediums, which is actually pretty fun. And there's different types of mediums that make your, your surface maybe look more like satin or sandy or glossy or matte. Um, and if you use this as a medium, it will make your painting look very dry and chalky, um, which maybe you want, but uh, uh, I don't really recommend it. I did it for a long time. And when I made the switch, I was like, why did I do this for so long? Do you prefer board over canvas? I do specifically because I'm doing a lot of fine details. And if, if my surface is moving around while I'm trying to do those details, like every time I put the brush down, that's gonna like waver, vibrate and that's gonna just make things more difficult. So if you're really worried about detail and fine details, I mean, look at the, let me, look at the, the brush I'm using here. This is just silly. Um, I highly recommend the panel. Um, painting on a drum, basically. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So um, the, the strength in canvas is that play lets you accentuate expressive brush strokes more, um, which if you're working like maybe more, um, you know, impressionistic uh, style or completely abstract, if you're just, you know, saying, hey, I want this here, uh, you're probably best on canvas. Uh, my spost is like two inch or one inch. Uh, that, oh, brush? Dang. Yeah, that's a... That's, you probably want, you're probably good on canvas, to be honest. Um, the other thing, yeah, brush. I, I figured, I, I didn't think you were painting uh, on a one, one or two inch canvas. That would be <laughs> insane. But uh, I don't have that much detail. I just push a lot of paint around and play. Yeah, I think you're best on canvas. You're gonna have the uh, expressive, people do, yeah. Yeah, I've seen them, and, but uh, good God. I don't know how to do it. They paint on super small mini canvases, yeah. It's very cool. 
but I just think about myself doing that and I rip my hair out. Because for me, me working, when I work big, I'm working on detail, but I'm not really working super small per se. Like, yeah, this this has quite a bit of detail, but you know, each brush stroke is like like a thumbnail size, like not not super small. So, but uh, the other advantage to canvas is the texture, which you don't really get with with panel. Uh, you can get some texture on how, depending on how you prime your panel. If you prime your panel, um, you know, in one direction uh, first, let it dry, do your next layer. Uh, this way you can kind of mimic that like the thread uh, of the fabric of canvas, um, but it's never going to be the same. Me, I kind of just go crazy. Um, you can see in my Imprimatura here, uh, Imprimatura, uh, just being a uh, burnt sienna uh, ground, uh, transparent, that you can then paint lights and darts into. Um, but that's that's for indirect painting, which kind of going all over the place. But uh, yeah, I think you're good with canvas. Those are the two advantages, uh, the play and the exaggerated brush, brush strokes and the texture. So I mentioned an imprimatura. Uh, it's a big fancy Italian word, I believe, uh, for um, the first thing or something like that, the first. And it's after you've primed your panel or your, or your canvas, this can be done on either one. Uh, you make a super thin um, burnt sienna. Uh, I actually do this with acrylic because you can always paint oil onto acrylic but you can't paint acrylic onto oil. Um, otherwise you're going to have major, major issues. So uh, the Imprimatura acts as kind of a middle value that if you're working indirectly, uh, it helps quite a bit. Now, what is indirect painting? That is what this is, the hair, all the flesh is all indirectly painted. And that just means you paint white on your Imprimatura and you, if you need to make it a slightly darker area than your white, you just make it a little more transparent and let more of the imprimatura stand or come through. Same thing with your darks. You're using burnt umber. Some people use black. Uh, I don't recommend it. I uh, use burnt umber and the same thing. You never actually mix your white and your burnt umber, um, but you still get your range of value on the imprimatura, which acts as the middle value. And then you glaze color over top. Um, you, uh, you never want to ha like change the value of your color. You just mix the color, the hue you want. You glaze it on top, and you rock the palm or the whatever this is of your hand on it, and you make a super thin film, and you do a few layers of that, and you get the color that you want. Now, what that does is it does bring your contrast more to the middle. Your lights are no longer as light as they were, your darks are no longer as dark as they were. And that's when you need to go back in to your glaze and work in your lights and darks. So that's indirect painting. The I mix indirect painting with direct. So this here that I'm working on is direct. It's not necessarily all a prima, which would be all at once, like an impressionist doing like a landscape or something, like at a very specific time in the day. Um, but it is direct in that it's not indirect. Um, I do sometimes let layers cure first, uh, which that's what prevents it from being all a prima. But um, if we look at this, this is direct, this is all indirect, and this will be glazed over. Uh, this isn't, she's not going to look like a weird orange zombie forever. So, um, that's a huge tangent. I, you probably are not even worried about indirect painting. Uh, if you're doing abstract, large brush, you know, work. So I'm going to start painting, uh, for this section. And I'm going to start laying this. Now, I have to kind of contort my body in this spot. 
because of the camera placement. We're just going to do a quick test and we're going to see how this looks. So this is one of the darker sections. Zillustrator is raiding with a party of 30. Holy crap. Zillustrator. Holy crap. You realize I've never had 30 people in here at once. So thank you, Zillustrator. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. Holy crap. Screwbulb is following. Thank you, Figgy Purr. Holy crap, what's up? I've never had more than 10 people in here, so I don't even know what's going on at this point. But thank you. I've got some, I got some, what? holy crap, Figgy Purr now following. Thank you. Uh, if you're new here, you probably don't know this, but I put my followers' names on my palette. So uh, are we going to take care of that? Well, thank you, Zillustrator. Uh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, but I guess I will uh, put your names on my palette quick. Uh, let me get this stuff off of here. Holy crap. Uh, cyborg sellout. Thank you for the follow. Uh, your stuff looks really cool. That's a lot of names to write. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of overwhelmed right now, but in a good way. You should have 300. Jesus, thank you. So let me move this stuff up, up here. I gotta move my tea. You can tell this doesn't happen very often. Holy crap. Let's get uh, my palette back on here. Um, today's been crazy. I, uh, I haven't, I put literally two little brush strokes on my, my board and it's been 45 minutes. I appreciate it so much. You guys are great. Holy crap. Uh, let me get my tea real quick. All right. My brushes are over here too. Oh, right. so back at it. We got our palette. We got, uh, we got some new people. Illustrator asks, what's the medium? Uh, uh, I didn't get one still, just mixing linen, oil, and turp a bit. Uh, I want to get liquid. I think that is available at my local art shop. So um, that's an excellent question. So the medium I'm using uh, is the Basic Bitch uh, Painting Medium. This is the closest thing to linseed oil that you're going to get. Um, this will make a semi-gloss finish and uh it it just is like it has kind of all the things you're looking for just not to any extreme uh basic bitch is my favorite brand then you may want to try the uh the basic uh, uh painter's medium now liquid has some very 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 distinct differences the first is that it's going to make oil paint dry faster, which for me, that's my favorite thing about oil paint is that it doesn't dry in during my session or the next day. You know, typically oil paint will cure at least to the touch in like a week, uh, unless you're doing huge like impasto uh, kind of stuff. It will still probably dry to the touch, you know, the outer layer, but it'll be like a like a, a paint balloon. Uh, and if you touch it, it will just pop and go everywhere. So that's the first thing about liquid. It, it, it will make it dry faster, uh, which you may want. The, the second thing, uh, oh, the basic medium doesn't affect drying? No, it's, it's, if you, it's, it's going to be the same as like linseed oil. It's, I think, synthetic linseed oil. It might even just be linseed oil that they put a fancy name on. Who knows? But um, it's going to be very similar than uh, similar to like if you just put paint 
out of the tube onto something and let it dry. Um, I'd only want it drying faster when underpainting and stuff and such. Even then, for me, liquid, and there are actually, there are mediums that will make your oil paint dry even faster. Um, and I've tried some of them and I've, it's not just that they dry faster, they do still give you a little bit of time to play with what you're doing, but they have this weird thing where once you put them down, it's like stained that section. Even if you wipe it off, there's like this under layer that seems to like dry instantly. And that drove me absolutely crazy. Um, for me, uh, my under underpainted uh, layers are all, it's all the same to me. Um, I only stream Mondays and Tuesdays, so for me it's really easy to just wait a week. Um, obviously if you don't have that kind of situation, you're actually trying to like make, <laughs> you know, make a living, then yeah, experiment with them, but be extra careful. Experiment with it on something else first. Um, but Liquin also has a few other, a few other differences rather than just being like a quick drying medium for oil. Liquin will also give you a satin finish. Whereas this, um, this medium will basically give you a semi-gloss. Uh, you can see it here, um, especially if I move to the detail camera, you'll see this, this uh, crazy glare over here. Uh, that's because it is semi-glossy and the more medium you use, the more gloss you're going to have. So it almost, unless you're okay with that, it almost requires you to use um, some sort of varnish that will unify the whole thing. Um, but anyway, liquid. And I'm, I'm keeping you on your ed the edge of your seat uh, with these other things. Satin finish. I said that one. The other thing is that it's also a non-Newtonian liquid. I think that's the term for it. Um, but it doesn't move unless you move it. So it's extremely good for thick areas. Like uh, in pasto, if you're doing crazy like stuff with your, your palette knife or a really huge brush, uh, and you really want that, that you know, huge exaggerated texture, uh, Liquin will make sure that that does not sag or droop or slide or, or run in any way. It will never move unless you move it, which, uh, it's pretty cool. It's fun to work with. Um, it's also darker. It's more of a, it's more of a brown. It, you know, this is pretty, as bad as yellow as yellow gets. Um, liquid is much browner. Uh, I've never run into a situation where it really affected my color, but maybe if you're working with like super light, like whites, super like bright whites, it could potentially affect your color. Not sure. Um, I don't think drying, you know, color is affected by liquid. But there are a lot of other mediums. There, you know, there are tons. There are some novelty ones, like ones that make it look like sandy. Um, there are some that, uh, you know, are matte, specifically matte. Um, there, are, there are a lot. Uh, so you definitely want to, ex want to experiment. You can mix them. For a while, I was mixing linseed oil with liquid with terpenoid and it worked for a little bit but uh, for me I wanted to get as far away from using terpenoid as a medium as possible I did it, it was just terpenoid for a very long time and it uh, it makes your finish look very dry and chalky especially if you're working thin I saw a test by a landscape artist. It only yellowed if used in crazy amounts. 10 to 1 in favor of mediums. Yeah, I believe it. I, I mean, I, I used it for a little bit and I never noticed. Um, and I, But I never did use crazy amounts. Uh, I've never been one to work, you know, in pasta. So, um, like, like all of them, it has its pros and cons. Uh, for me, I would be using linseed oil uh, if if my art shop had it at the time, I kind of just said, eh, I'll get this instead. Uh, 
I can't tell the difference, to be honest. Um, maybe a little thinner, a little more fluid, which for me seems to work better because I can, I can get it to more of like a milky consistency to do some fine details uh, on that. Uh, thanks for your answer. I've, I have only linseed and terpenoid for now. That's, that's really all you need, but I mean, as always, you know, I, I highly suggest experimenting, finding what works for you. For me, linseed oil works. I typically end up varnishing at the end. And that's one thing where if you use uh, liquid, you're gonna get your satin finish, but if you do varnish, the varnish is going to be the, the kind of end all on your finish. So if you have if everything satin and you put a gloss varnish on, everything's gloss. Um, sometimes you can get some cool effects uh, with, uh, with that, but it's not super easy to control. But, uh, but yeah, um, I'm essentially using Lindsay Uh That's the, the short, too long, didn't read version of that. The reason why I work transparent in pretty much all situations is because the ultimate goal is to have light go through all those layers, even the imprimatura, hit the white of the panel, the, the primed panel, which is the only opaque thing ever, it's just this pure white. The light goes through all these layers, hits the white panel, reflects back, and you have almost uh, like a stained glass kind of look. Uh, now, obviously, it's not glass, but you can get a lot of depth of color by layering colors on top of each other and an actual kind of physical depth, too, if you think about it. If your layers, even if they're only a millimeter thick, that is actual physical depth that people are looking into your painting rather than just looking at a surface. So all of this is transparent. This here, um, you may think, oh, this is, you know, the, the prime surface. This is what he's painting on. No, this went on top of the imprimatur. Um, and this is going to get sanded down uh, to a much smoother uh, surface uh, with much less, um, much less texture and variation. Uh, and there's going to be some really cool things going on with the light in this because there's a there there's a one specific thing in this painting that I'm not really going to get into right now because I do want to kind of surprise everybody with it. But uh, there's one thing giving off a very wild, wildly colored light, and it's going to be kind of affecting everything. You're going to see it, and there are going to be a lot of shadows caused by the chair, and those shadows are going to be cast on this wall here. It will stay white for the most part but um but yeah 
that's gonna there's gonna be light reflecting off of all these folds in the dress the hair the the, the leg the arm uh, really everything and I think that's what's gonna pull it together and make it not just a traditional scene of you know two women one of them's on a chair uh, it's going to be pretty pretty wild and I'm scared to death to do it to be honest because it's so it's such a dramatic uh, kind of wild uh, change to what's already here and by then this is probably going to be in the uh, state where I love it I don't want to mess it up and if I do I'll probably cry Screwball says that sounds crazy I had no idea oil painting had those kinds of details yeah and that is specific it kind of started with with the Renaissance masters and they were so they had to compete with the camera like they were the cameras and at the time like the camera was being developed and they had to set themselves apart and that's why they created that's why they worked indirectly because they weren't they didn't care about being artistic uh i mean they did but they're trying to recreate a scene as as accurately as they can you know they built actual like like uh grid structures 3d grid boxes that they put their their you know subject in you know people whatever it ended up being so that they could essentially mimic those things in coloring books where it's you know a grid and and there's like a picture of a turtle and you have to draw the picture of the turtle with the grid uh, because it's easier and they they left nothing up to chance they had complete control over everything and they started working indirectly for that reason, but then they realized, you know, wow, I'm putting all these layers down and these layers really make it look better, you know, where they intersect. If we just put, you know, one color down, that's kind of, you know, it certainly has done, if, if you work directly, I mean, I work 50-50, but you can do some crazy stuff with direct painting. But at the time, they weren't really too uh, wild in terms of color usage. So when they when they started overlapping layers, they thought, "Wow, this is great. We need to build on this." Let's just look at the detail camera for a second. We got some crazy glare, but let's look at the pattern for a bit. I'm gonna find somebody to raid. I don't even know who I'm gonna raid. I've made a list of people to raid. And guess what? Uh, I've never really had the, uh, the opportunity, so let's do it. Real quick, thank you. It's been great. Uh, I'll be back next Monday, Mondays and Tuesdays, 6.30 to 9 Eastern. YouTube, things, thank you. Let's do this.